It's time! Yeah, 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 yeah! Time to epoxy the turd catcher. I'm gonna epoxy the turd catcher. This is probably gonna be a several day process because there's a lot of sides to the toilet and we would like to have a smooth surface to clean, if you know what I mean. So we've got this set up here on some plastic and this needs to be on a level surface. I have, we've done epoxy. We did a bit of epoxy on our kitchen counter, but haven't done a smooth one, <laughs> like a tabletop epoxy. I'm not gonna do a pour. Um, you probably could. There's a lot of lumps and bumps and crevices and stuff. So I'm just gonna use a foam brush and pretty much paint it on. I don't need a lot. Um, I just want basically a smooth layer, kind of like what they do on the outside of a boat to keep it from being penetrated by water. We don't want our toilet to be penetrated by, you know. All right, so here we go. I've got you on the edge of the counter. I need to be hands-free for this, so probably won't get too many good shots. And uh, that looks like a brand glove. And we're gonna learn how to do this together. We're like in a really hardcore crunch right now because we're moving in on Friday. So Brian's working on the bedroom. I gotta get this toilet ready so we can drop loaves in it <laughs> by Friday. <laughs> Oh, yeah. All right, so you need two mixing cups as the directions say. So this is equal parts. You don't want to mess around with this. I'm going to do a half cup of each part. Again, I'm pretty new at this, so read your instructions. Hooey, that's a thick. One part resin to one part hardener. By liquid volume, pour in the hardener. Oh shit. Pop, pour the hardener first, then the resin. Well, I already messed up, but we're gonna just, we're gonna go with this. Okay. Hey Siri, set timer for five minutes. Okay, your timer is set for five minutes. Thank you. Ooh, nice. <laughs> That's a proper stirrer. That should help you out, huh? Thank you, darling. Yeah, darling. I'm gonna go put these walls up now. Yes. All right, back to stirring. Oh wow, life is better with a big stick. <laughs> you want your project to be on a level surface so that it doesn't drip everywhere. While Aaron continues to epoxy, I am working on walls. So here's what I did while you were out. Basically what I did was I measured the space and then I cut the piece with plywood and then I screwed it in with GRKs here. Up at the top, I used uh, some Craig, Drake, Craig screw holes along the bottom as well, right there and then we'll stain this in place. This is just a temporary piece right here so that I could line up and figure out where on the wall this needed to live. The other one over here was the exact same, just in reverse. Also GRKs, Craig screws into the frame and into the bottom there. And then this one will sit something like that. We'll obviously not have wool sticking out from there. That's the wall portion for there. Uh, next up, I've got to get a back piece that goes across the back top, and then also a wall that's gonna come out this direction uh, because these are gonna end up being like shelves right through here. Oh, it's like a massive jigsaw puzzle. You got no idea what's gonna happen until it happens. So you keep a square with you just for hilarity just to prove to yourself time and time again that there's nothing to squ 
square to work off of. But we are thinking about getting a slide bevel. So they're also called T bevels. Uh, they're used, uh, or false squares is another name for them. They're used for Basically, it looks like a square, but instead of it being fixed like this, it's got a screw right here in the in the corner, and then this edge can be moved uh, around so you can figure out what exact angle. They're used a lot for like doing miter cuts and stuff like that, uh, crown molding, matching angles. Uh, so this is that would be totally useful for this phase in the build. So we might go pick one up tomorrow when we're out and about. Everything is going great though, y'all. I'm so excited that the water is turning out good. Uh, we've got no leaks now. We've got hot water. I've already drank water out of there. We've made some cacao. Oh, it's so cool. Like this is finally coming together. It's materializing and we're gonna be living out here soon. So I'm using Aaron's tracing method and she's blown away by it. She's blown away. Did you see me tracing back here? Yeah, that really happened. Real life. There we go. That piece will live nicely there. step on the carpet. I'll choke him out. <laughs> I just made it so nice. Yeah, you did. We've never seen this carpet look so good. Except for the day we put it in. So, we're ready. And we're gonna go get the mattress. Hold on. If you haven't seen our video where we make this bed contraption, check out right here. I think you got the heavy end. Probably. <laughs> Holy smokes. Okay. And then. Oh. All right. Here we go ahead. All right, if we carry it lower. Oh my God. Oh. Okay, watch out for the toilet. I'm dropping slippery seal. <laughs> Okay. I think it's upside down. How do you know? Because uh, ours, this is the coils. Shit! How do we flip it? I don't know. It is upside down. Well, that sucks. No, I think we need to like... Yeah? Maybe pull it out towards us. Okay, and up. And then flip it forward. Oh no. Oh no is right. Um, I think we need to pull one end into the hall yeah. and then put it back in.
Push it into that end. Yeah, that's one day. One, two, three, push. All right, ready? One, two, three, push. There we go. Whew. Almost there. So which way you want to rotate it? That way? Okay. And then rotate it over the shelf. If only it said, make sure this side goes up. But this side was on the middle. It was in the middle. So it's impossible. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. New day. This turned out really good. I love it. It's so fun. There's a few little dry spots around the edge. Ain't nobody want porous wood on their toilet. So we're no, gonna no. give this another coat. Now the face of it. I feel like I'm seasoned enough after two rounds to do the front of the potty now. Should we do this? Mm, no, let's do beeswax on that. Okay. Yeah. That way we can get that patina rolling. That piss patina? Yeah. Got some walls to work on here in the bedroom area. So if you remember last night, we pulled the bed out and uh, put the mattress up on the top. That was hilarious. I don't wish to relive that ever again. That was crazy. Whoever thunk that it was put into the box and the, the vacuum ceiling upside down had no idea we just popped it open and there you have it so this wall went in really nice and today i'm going to work on the side ones here for both the sides along with framing out the windows so wish me luck oh this is nice i wonder if uh aaron would mind if i took a nap real quick turn down the light a little bit Oh my gosh. What? You land down on that thing without me? What are you, what are you, well, oh, oh shoot, Aaron's back and the lights are back up and I'm measuring stuff. I was just getting, you taking a nap? Just getting some work done, that's all. <laughs> you guys let me know in the comments what that rascal was up to. <laughs> this is not gonna be the board for this particularly. However, it, it sticks out far enough that I'm able to get some measurements off of it. Um, so this board here, we're gonna have boards going across this area. And uh, obviously the wool won't stick out all creepily. But these will go like this and screw into the furring strip. But we got a little gap here. And if we're screwing in at this angle, it might try to suck the board in flush. So I was thinking, well, what if we cut a piece of wedge, like a piece of wood that's uh, to extend this furring strip out. And so with this board at that angle, we can now measure how big the bottom edge of that wedge needs to be. And that is half an inch. So what we'll do is we'll cut uh, a wedge piece. Let's see, this is probably one and, a, one and five eighths. So we got a two by four end and we cut uh, a wedge from the tip here and then a half inch on this side here. And then we would be able to slide it up in there. Uh, glue and and uh, probably use like either staples or brads to hold it in place every so often. And then this board here, whenever it goes to rest against there, it'll now rest flush. And then when we screw it in with GRKs, then it won't try to like suck into the bottom. So that's the idea we're running with. This looks like it's gonna be a pretty good level there. And we'll also be able to screw the top edge of the board into furring strips every so often.
not like we won't get crazy with it but every so often uh, looking to avoid any of the uh, wiring so what this is going to allow us to do is also have a wire chase that we can remove so if um, if we ever need to run more wires or um, or remove wires or make any adjustments we could always unscrew whichever piece of wood is up here wherever we need to like maybe we just if we're running a wire from the back to the front we might unscrew this one and then unscrew one over here be able to pass a wire through and then just put those two boards back up uh, so it'll give us some latitude for how to to do that um, also that's going to give us uh, room to maybe have this piece that's a wedge come down a little bit lower because this bottom, this this piece of wood right here that's gonna go there, um, we, we need something to screw it into. And so if we have that come down, then uh, the wedge come down to the top edge of that board, then, or close to it, we'll be able to screw up into that board. So these boards basically are not connected together. I don't think they really need to be. Um, and then this board will be supported with screws up into that wedge furring strip extension. So that's the whole thought process behind that. So on this side over here, we can cut this board once we get this leveled out and screwed in. We can then mark this board and figure out how far we need to, by, uh, to cut it in and make this notch, drop this little edge and then slide this piece over right over there. So that should work for that and then we'll cut a little pieces for wherever else so that's what we're working on let's see uh, how easy or tough this is Got our wedge. Let's see how it fits in the dry fit. That works perfect. That worked real nice. Cool. And then we screw into that. That holds it nice. I think that's gonna work perfectly. Awesome. We'll do. Uh, we'll make some more. Maybe I can make one long one potentially. Maybe. Let's try. All right, here's a detail of what the wedge looks like. So it gives us the proper angle right here so that the board will sit flush against this instead of trying to sit flush against this vertical piece here, which will then set the angle at which the board will rise up towards the ceiling. So now that we've got our prototype wedge, it's actually the perfect fit who would have guessed? Thanks, Bob, for such an awesome table saw that's given us the perfect angle that we need. So we're gonna make 10 total of these, and I've got this long two by four here. Uh, first, I'm gonna start off by ripping the uh, it to width because we only need pieces this long or this, this thick, so to speak. Um, and, then, uh, and then we'll finish cutting everything else, but that's what we're gonna do, and I think it's gonna work out just great. And always, kids, be sure to put on your eye pro. Oh, yeah. Bring it back. <laughs> Haven't done that in a while. And be sure to unplug your table saw when you're doing stuff like this so that it doesn't accidentally get going on you. There we go. So it didn't cut all the way through, but it did almost. Look at that. Perfecto. Got a long ass wedge. Five, six, seven, eight.
Well, because we're gonna need more of these, I'm just gonna flip this board around to the square side, which is this side here. And I'm gonna run it through again and have this square edge, the original outside edge towards the fence. And uh, then we'll have more. Now that we got our pieces cut, I got some wood glue that already started juking out on me. And there we go. Let's see, I'll probably put this here. And that doesn't really matter there right now. So I think these, the square edge is the side that needs the glue. So I'll put those here for the glue. All right, so we got the brad nailer. I've got uh, one and a half inch staples, 18 gauge staples in here. These basically are gonna be nailed and glued right here just to hold them in place. There we go. Wow. That's wow. So easy. That's <laughs> so fucking easy. <laughs> Nail guns are great, guys. Wow. I look forward Thanks, to building. Dad. I look forward to building an off-grid cabin one day yeah. with a nail gun. Everything with a <laughs> nail gun. Everything's gonna be used nails. <laughs> I'm just over here using my dirty old wax cloth to mm. wax up this. You're I just got, waxing? Yeah, I got all the edges nice and rounded and it feels really nice and smooth. So we'll be able to start setting stuff back here and feel like this space is kind of done-ish. Done-ish. done, -ish. done, -ish. done -ish. We moved into the bus. Something just happened. Um, we've been here for, I guess, two days. We haven't filmed any of it because we've just been living in crazy clutter. Um, so yesterday I did a whole bunch of food prep and things were going really great. And this morning I was like, oh, we better check the water tank because I've been using a lot of water and we didn't need to check it because it let us know that it was full. So, we had a little bit of an overflow thing happen this morning. The, <laughs> the pipe that Brian's working on right now on the recirculating shower, up top, it's vented between our gray tank right here and that one for the shower. So what happened was they were connected because those two gray water tanks were gonna collect all of our gray water together. And then we changed our minds. I kind of pushed us to get a recirculating <laughs> shower going. We just hadn't rearranged the piping down there yet, meaning like they were separate but then when this gray water overflowed it actually overflowed through the vent pipe through the top and we just hadn't disconnected the vent pipe so that gray tank got really full in order to do that and then the recirculating shower was still open and then the recirculating shower tank overflowed and created quite a mess but nothing got harmed or injured in the process we just got a little wet that was special not really what we had planned for in the cards today but i think we're cool now are we cool now uh yeah i think that we're cool um we're just trying to use systems that we haven't finished yet <laughs> that were previously designed for other purposes and uh so to completely fix this, we need to uh, revent the
the gray water tank, which is the main tank that we're using for the kitchen sink, bathroom sink, and washing machine. So we need its own vent line, and then we need to disconnect it off of the second tank and give it its own vent line, and then they'll be completely separate. You gotta see what I talked Brian into hanging up. Look at this. Oh, I love this thing. I've talked him into hanging it above our island. It's more centered. That is more centered. Let's do that. And we've got two screws there, so I'm not really worried about drilling through electric right there. But we do have electric coming this way. So it probably. We're on the hardwood one. Yeah. Here we go. So I'll just go right between it. Looks like you hit something. <laughs> Not electric. <laughs> <laughs> How did I talk you into this? With your words, good looks, and charm. <laughs> <laughs> So we pre-drilled it, now we're putting a hook in the ceiling, and in moments, this is going to be on the ceiling. <laughs> so, last night, I got my spices arranged. Got cute little labels made for them. Aren't they adorable? My grandma Bic gave me all these cute old, old jars. Who knows how old they are. She said that she probably had them since she got married, which is ages ago. Yeah, that was in the early 1900s. <laughs> it was maybe, I don't know if it was the early 1900s. Look at this one. Isn't that the cutest? I also had a really fantastic idea for a shelf area under here, but you're going to have to wait for that. It's like magic. Oh, babe. Do you like it? Yeah. Mm. Look at it. Now I just Look won't be able to see your that. face while I'm standing here. Wow. So it's still chaos in here, but the piles are slimming down a bit. Get a little more organized, aren't we? A little bit more organized. And it's wonderful cooking in here, by the way. We've been making some bacon and eggs, torti huevos. You're going to want to check out the recipe for that. You can visit uh, beadventurepartners.com and uh, look at all our recipes that we're going to come out with. Eventually. So we decided to stagger our sprouts because we are going through them really really fast because we love them so much so right now i've got a crunchy salad mix up there which has uh lentils several lentils peas and chickpeas there's like a variety of all of them so i'm super excited to try that and then we've got one that's brown mustard now we were forewarned that the brown mustard one is super spicy um so, oh, yeah. That should be really good. We're really enjoying this sprout thing. You can put them on everything and they are majorly packed with nutrients because in their miniature form, when they first sprout out of the seed, they have all the energy and nutrition that they will ever have as they grow into a big plant. Isn't that cool? It's almost time to put you in your home toilet. Look at you. Goddamn. You are sexy. Can't wait to drop a loaf in you. Over here, we are getting ready to install the wall for the bathroom. This is not the only wall, there's gonna be quite a few. But here's the first one, Aaron has already painted it. I went ahead and cut it up. I just made a little notch hole, you'll see where that goes here in a second. Um, but I think that this is gonna be great. It is uh, whitewashed and it looks really, really nice. Same whitewash that we used for the ceiling. Holy smokes, looks like a bomb blew up in here. That's what it looks like to move in and not have anywhere to put everything. That looks nice. There you go. There go there. So that's their connection for the urine diverter right down there, that little mouse hole. 
no mice are gonna live in there though. Looks like a cat would go in there. But we don't have a cat either. No, we don't have a cat. <laughs> that looks or a good. ferret. Yeah. Or a ferret. Yeah. Looks really good. Oh, the ceiling looks good too. Yeah, it does. If only we can finish this part up here. Mm. Yeah. It's coming soon. Soon. I promise. Someday. We have priorities, guys. It's like now that we're living in here, the bathroom is kind of an essential part of living in here. Yeah. Because we don't want to pee in a sawdust bucket forever. Not forever. No. Let's get this wallet. Yeah. Here we go. Pretty damn close. Pretty damn close. About a sixteenth off. It's good enough for this bus. <laughs> So we didn't really talk about it much, but back when we did the floor, we actually oversaturated it, which caused this kind of like pock murky effect on the floor and makes the floor feel really waxy and sticky, which is super annoying because we spent a lot of time preparing the wood and taking nails out of it and turning it into tongue and groove and sanding it and all the things that you need to do when you DIY a floor from old, old wood. So right now what I'm doing while Brian's working on the walls is I'm trying to buff this stuff off of the floor and it's really tedious, but soon we're gonna want, well right now we're starting to put appliances in we got our fridge down once we make that permanent we're not going to be able to buff around the footprint of it and we're about to put the toilet in so we won't be able to get up close to the edges of the toilet so i need to actually do it now so then we can put the toilet in so that's what i'm up to i threw in a furring strip right behind this uh, piece here because we're going to actually have a sill that comes out here but there was nothing to attach it to so i countersunk this uh down below the level here here, so there'd be plenty of clearance and then we'll just screw it directly into there so I'm gonna wiggle it up just a wee bit we got plenty of uh, wool right there and we'll just secure it with a few GRKs okie dokie so we've tried a lot of different things to try to pull up the excess oil off the floor so what we're gonna we're going back to this method <sighs> cup wheel this buffing pad is the most aggressive and mineral oil or mineral spirit sorry on a rag so i had just spent a couple hours in this like one little spot with mineral uh spirits and the orbital sander with a buffing pad on it. Um, but I don't know if it's aggressive enough to pull it up. As soon as we started walking on the floor again, our boot prints stuck to the floor. And I also tried, like it was like immediately the boot prints just show and stick to the floor. And I tried my bare foot on it and it felt kind of sticky, which isn't what we're going for. So. I'm gonna have back at her with this cup. Something else you have to be kind of careful of is not to go over a spot too much because then the wax kind of reheats itself and then you're just smearing wax around and then you gotta also be careful that the pad doesn't get too dirty um, or too saturated also because then you're just smearing wax around. So there's, it's a fine tuning kind of a situation. I'll show you guys the difference. So there's the non-buffed and here's the buffed. These two light color boards. Wish me luck.
doing? Oh, hi there, didn't see you there. You caught me uh, mapping out the next piece. <laughs> okay, so here's what I do for weird pieces. Actually, let me rephrase this. Here's what I do for all the pieces because they're all weird. There's nothing standard, you gotta measure everything or just eyeball it, whatever you wanna do, however specific you want. So what I do is I look at an area, I'm like, what piece needs to fit there? And I draw the shape. First I draw the shape. I'm like, okay, I could do this. And then I measure all the sides for the shape to get the outside perimeter. After I get the outside perimeter, I say, okay, are there any areas that need knocked out? So for instance, we need a hole here so that we can have the light switches and outlet. So then I'm like, okay, well, where on this, uh, this traced outline will that lie? And so I try to put it as approximate as possible because if you put it too far over or whatever it just it makes it confusing and then after that then i measure in this case this is my constant and this is my constant because those aren't moving and those are just the ones that i picked um, and then i measure off of that to this edge and then put that measurement and then off of this to this edge and then i put that measurement here because if I measured from here to here, but then I measured from here to here and I didn't know where exactly this first measurement stopped because it stopped somewhere right around here, then this measurement here might be off. So by just measuring from here to here and then here to here, I know that I'm gonna get a pretty accurate hole placement. And then for the bottom, I measure from here up to there, and then from here up to there to get my bottom and top mm. measurement for that. So you always have a constant, and you always know that your most square side is your constant. Yeah, most square, mostly square. Most like, square. I'm gonna use that loosely. Now, do you wanna tell them what we're doing with the side of the window we're gonna... Oh yeah, so originally we were gonna just frame it out and have them square, but eh, we like to be a little crazy sometimes. So we decided on these side ones to flare them out a little bit. So yeah. in this case, this one here will be approximately one and an eighth inch away from this edge here. So it'll kind of dip open. And then that one over there is also going to be uh, dipped open just a little bit. I don't know what angle it's opening up, but it's going to have kind of like a flared out look so that instead of it's like, boom, there's a window. It's like, oh, and there's the window. It kind of invites the light in to flow through and around. I don't know if you guys can see, but these are also tipped out at an angle like this yeah. versus being square. Yeah. So they're all kind of tipped out like that. Um, the sill is flat, yeah. and then this part is fairly flat. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, they're only screwed in with GRKs so that if we ever need to access the wires or run another wire, we could take off this little board here and maybe the board here on the end and then fish a wire through. Um, or if we need to make adjustments or whatever to our DIY schoolie, Ooh. our DIY bug out bus, then we can. See, look at over there. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe you can, yeah, you can kind of tell. Yeah. It's hard it's to tell on camera, out. maybe. Tipped a little bit. I'm really liking it. Yeah. So it's coming out really nice. I also got this piece put in here, um, and that kind of caps off uh, the edge there and have it kind of. Uh, going along the ceiling. So it's kind of matched a little bit. And if you look at this outlet right here, you can see an example of what measuring off of one side and the other side does. It gives the outlet box plenty of room, but it's still smaller than the outlet plate, which is not on there right now. So if the outlet plate, see how there's a little bit of room around the outlet? We could easily just put this here and uh, then screw it on. I don't have a screwdriver with me or or I can screw it. I can use my sense. thumbnail. This is dang old utilitarian. Yeah, we'll get a screwdriver. I don't want to mess it up. But that's a, an example of measuring from a solid piece will do for you. This is the not done side. Obviously from there over is done. We're still having this boot problem. I know my boots are dirty, but it still feels kind of sticky on the boot. So, 
I'm gonna keep working away at it. Because we couldn't help it. Bow! Crapper's ready! Bow! Look at that. Thank you, beauty. Bits and bobs are here. Bits and bobs. Great. <laughs> Get a whiff of that. <laughs> Was my face still in there? This is the last time you're gonna wanna smell that. <laughs> All right, what do you got going on here, Garcia? I'm just loosening this up just a little bit so that we got a little bit of movement on it. There we go. Oh, we got a lot of movement on it. Perfect. All right, so we are using the Hepvo to uh, to connect all of this. We kind of just mocked this up so that we knew that the fittings would be on the right angle and stuff like that. So um, now basically all we need to do is plumb the urine diverter to the drain pipe going through the wall. This has the laundry machine drained through it. So the Wii will go on a trip every time. Well, the Wii's gonna go on a trip that way anyways, downhill. But when we use the wash machine, the wash machine will really clean it out. So that's why we've got them plumbed together. Um, and then we will collect the turds in a bucket at the back with sunnest. Honestly, the Hepo is a really cool idea, but finding fittings to go along with it has been really challenging. It would have been nice if Hepo would have went with classic household piping. I don't know. Maybe this is a European thing and that's why we're not matching up so good. We're not sure, but it's been a pain. so smooth. <laughs> I just imagine cleaning porous wood. Yeah. <laughs> After somebody has a bad burrito. <laughs> uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. No, no, <laughs> no, no offense to burritos out there. I love burritos, by the way. <laughs> or some bad takeout or something. Or some bad poutine. Oh, not poutine. <laughs> I do. You're going to be the first. I do have to pee. I have to pee a lot, actually. This connection is solid, y'all. Nice that, job. That fits perfectly. Freaking talk about being in alignment. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. But the question is, who will drop the first deuce? nest in there. Turd nest. There it is. It's time to drop it like it's hot. <laughs> 